Hey everybody, just want to apologize for one thing in advance for this video. If you see me uh, a little um, off, a little distracted, <laughs> and whatnot, uh, that would be because I just recently went to the dentist just before I, I did that video, let the numbing wear off a little bit, and then I did this, so I was a little uh, about my tooth and whatnot. Um, I got multiple appointments coming, but now that you, you can't tell it now, but earlier, man, I, I had the like the face of a stroke victim. Chris here uh, to show you in this video a few pickups um, I got for I can't remember what week. <laughs> um, it's uh, some more comic books that arrived in the mail, and uh, yeah, just I've I've read them now and just share some of my uh, quick thoughts on them. So let's start here with um, Witchblade 141. Well, I haven't read this one. This one is actually uh, a comic book for my wife, which is quite busy in, at her work right now and she's gotten behind on reading the Witchblade series but uh, it is a beautiful series I'm starting to get interested in it and I'm reading some issues here and there but uh, haven't been reading this one um, <clears throat> but uh, the artwork from this Sedgwick is just amazingly beautiful I hope they're paying this guy well because it's just it is just crazy good art it is amazing so we'll put that one down there <clears throat> Next one up here is Hulk number 620, or Incredible Hulks, I guess. I like the cover there. Cover's fairly good. Um, this one is a $4 title. Um, that's supposed to be Hulk's father on the cover. <clears throat> this is part of the Chaos um, War, or whatever. And uh, I'm not getting into the Chaos War thing. The Hulk issues with Chaos War have been pretty good, but um, I don't know. I'm just not into this uh, overall event. Um, you know, a lot of people rising from the dead again, and that. And overall, I've already seen that kind of stuff in the <clears throat> the X-Men titles and whatnot. So um, you know, and there's all this brightest day stuff too. And <clears throat> but the issue itself is fairly good. Um, it leaves you off where he's actually going to be going into the Chaos War um, miniseries, and they are actually an important um, front, the Hulks, at um, uh, fighting and battling against the uh, Chaos King. So that's pretty cool. Um, in this one, he does fight against a, uh, this demonized version of his father and, and uh, meets his, his mother and whatnot. Um, but it's really cool. I like uh, Abomination. That is um, one of, I guess, the generals uh, for this Chaos War thing. Uh, just overall, these Chaos War tie-ins are pretty cool. I like it, but uh, yeah, not getting into um, the, cha the Chaos Wars. Maybe, just about, just about maybe, but um, yeah. I um, want to show you guys here too, while I was waiting for these books, I picked up this book. <laughs> Look familiar? Um, well, I was trying to wait for my books coming in the mail, but I, I needed a fix, and I was working a night shift. <clears throat> just went across the street to get a coffee, and they had some comic books on the stand, um, and newsstand editions, um, I don't know, you never know what's going to come in, they're just kind of random, or they'll have, get an issue of, of, say, Wolverine, and it'll be on the shelf for like six months, and you just never know with, with, uh, newsstand editions. Also, one thing is newsstand cost more. Now, I didn't really look at the price when I first picked this up, but it disturbs me now. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see there. Newsstand edition, five dollars. Five dollars for this title. It's the same book 
but you have your direct edition, which is $3.99, and always, newsstand has usually always been a dollar more, but it just baffles me now that, that $5 for the comic book, it's not even a variant edition. I mean, if they were changing things up for the newsstand editions, it might make me want <clears throat> to pay that much more, but I think a lot of us comic book guys, you know, we really want to draw the line at $2.99. Um, DC is doing a really great thing with their regular monthlies, um, you know, doing two ninety nine. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so Marvel guys, I don't know you, you, you. We're all being more picky, more choosy, and making sure our content variants—they all got to be all that much better if you're going to continue having higher prices. So, but I eventually think Marvel should follow suit and um, you know be dropping their prices too. But just want to let you know, five bucks, man, oh man. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I'm showing this. <clears throat> Got to talk about it though, because it's 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 getting a lot of talk. Okay, Wolverine, the best there is, issue number two. Uh, this one's hard to to talk about. Just the overall, uh, the series did not get off to a good start. Awful start. Awful start. Terrible first issue. Marketing didn't match the um, the uh, you know the the story and the the you got the uh, things are censored out and it's just retardedly crazy um but in this issue I will say slightly better than the first um it didn't have it wasn't as messed up as issue number one <clears throat> but it does give you an explanation um basically he comes back to the X-Men and he's all kind of sober and with uh Hank McCoy's help, he kind of figures out a little bit about what was happening to him and how he was all messed up and and whatnot. But uh, just these crazy slapstick um, villains um, with some u unique, uh, no powers with this I don't know, euphoria kind of thing, and and uh, um, you know takes away your inhibitions and and whatnot. But um, so this comic book was a little slightly better. But the marketing and the story, they just don't match. It's... I don't know. It, I, I hate to say it because I'm a Wolverine fan. It's to see a Wolverine title tank. But I think that's what is happening. <laughs> um, I just watched a video on um, Stadium Comics where he was showing this one. Their unboxing of their new stuff in Wolverine issue number two. He said they ordered way less because... Also, he said, I think myself, I tanked the sales a little bit because he said in his first video, Wolverine issue number one um, was just awful and fans are just not liking it. So, um, I think they might, um, you know, uh, Marvel's going to have to kind of take it on the chin on this one and, and just maybe write out this first arc, take their loss, and, and um, you know, end the series. That's what I think they do because it's just not a fan favorite. It's been really terrible. Um, if they have anything planned after the first arc, uh, I mean, for marketing, Marvel might have to, I don't know, cancel this title and then take whatever they had for uh, any future stories and kind of regurgitate it into backups or or a whole new title on its own. Because Wolverine, the best there is, just ain't happening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try, I'm going to get a few more issues. We're going to see where this goes, this first arc. And I'm going to be the brave one to present it to you guys. <laughs> okay, now something that is really good. Okay, Wolverine issue number five. This is the um, conclusion uh, to the first arc um, where he's in hell. And basically, it's kind of, I think, in a sense, his father kind of helped get him to hell, which he meets in this comic book, which was really kind of cool. Um, and, uh, basically his pappy says how, uh, um, proud he is of, you know, the, the Wolverine, the man he is, um, and Wolverine doesn't really like that either, um, but his father was actually the first man he'd ever killed, um, you know, and basically, you know, in the last one he's beaten the devil, he's, now in this one he's like the, sort of the, the, Ruler of hell, he could be the new leader, but that doesn't happen. 
um, and has a little tussle with uh, Sabretooth, and uh, his good buddy Puck helps him try to get out of out of hell. And that what that's what eventually does happen. He gets out of hell, and he's confronted by um, the X Men. And he's still a little dazed and confused, and he's going to be a little trippy and whatnot. But, um, yeah, this this comic book, this new Wolverine title, this is fantastic. If anything, you're going to be reading Wolverine, read read this title. It's it's really good. I, I don't know, I can't say anything more good. You know, like it's, it's just really good. Get it. Um, Wolverine and Jubilee. This is the uh, issue one of four. And that's one of the only reasons I'd be getting it, is because it's a mini series. I can I can handle it. Jubilee's not my favorite. Um, I started to like the vampire arc in the new X Men title, um, where it ended off. I was just okay. I was okay with it. So this one is the reeling from the after effects of that kind of stuff, where Jubilee she's a vampire and um, she's getting transfusions from uh, Wolverine's blood and that kind of keeps her in check a little bit and Wolverine is supposed to be her caretaker and this one so she's trying to you know figure herself out a little bit she gets a little bit out of hand she runs off um, and there's another lady vampire that uh, you know persuades her a little bit and uh, at the end of the comic book um, it would kind of be like she's um, blame for the fault of, of um, a little mini massacre, um, which she's saying she didn't do. So there's uh, some big things that she's going to be blamed for and, I don't know, maybe a nice story with, with Wolverine and Jubilee. And it's going to be this, I don't know, regaining the emotional connection that they, they used to have, um, you know, and now that um, she has this bam vampirism impulses it may not be that so easy so it's gonna be it's gonna be kinda good but I'm not um, if it was a continuing series no way I, I wouldn't get it mini series is good enough for this awesome title here Amazing Spider-Man 651 uh, too bad though this is the you know last and it's only the second appearance of the new costume I do like it um, everybody's talking about, yes, the Spider-Tron, the, the funny kind of thing about that. They did ha come up with a Tron variant for this issue. Um, they, they make a little joke about um, this costume being a, an advertising for Tron. Um, so that's all kind of funny, but I do like it. Um, in this one, you do get to see the full spectrum of the suit of sorts, where it can cut off sound, um, and or how it's stealth. The, the green is supposed to be stealth. You got the red, which is supposed to be... Um, uh, like a soundproof or whatever, so it can keep out uh, the uh, goblins, hobgoblins, sonic, sonic scream, and then you have a, a white one, which I would I would assume is is just a neutral. Um, so it is pretty cool. Um, this big time stuff and with hobgoblin is amazing, just great stuff. I love where this starts. Um, uh, just a note to there's a cool letter in the back there. Um, about somebody just a big long-winded rant about um, Hobgoblin and how this uh, Phil Eric uh, has taken over the role as, as Hobgoblin and basically he's kind of like a Peter Parker but the villain version you know taking pictures of himself and, and uh, really making good things happen for him as a villain and those are helping him out as, as uh, in his life as a person um, when he was talking about uh, how he's kind of disappointed or he doesn't believe that Roderick King Kingsley was the original Hobgoblin that was killed when this, this Hobgoblin stuff started. Um, he says he just doesn't believe that. He says Roderick uh, Kingsley would have been more smart than that. He gives his reasons. It's a really neat letter. If you haven't read the letter, I think read it. Uh, I think it kind of does make sense. It would be... Um, a true uh, hobgoblin twist. If it really wasn't the uh, Kingsley hob hobgoblin that wasn't killed, that will be really neat. And maybe you will see the Kingsley hobgoblin come back. It will be kind of neat if, if that does happen. Uh, 
Big Time, The Amazing Spider-Man. I got something on my book. <laughs> uh, 652. Uh, you know, dang it, back to the original um, <laughs> costume. I mean, you only get two issues of the other one, and then you're back to this. I mean, it's classic, but I was enjoying that new costume. Um, you get to see the return of the Scorpion in a new suit. Matt Gargan is the Scorpion in a new suit. Um, with the help of Alistair Smythe, he's got this bug army. Um, he's going after J. Jonah Jameson and his loved ones. Um, in this one, it's first um, his son, who is um, on this new space rocket. And uh, this launch is overseen in part by Horizon Labs, which um, Parker is working for now. So he gets to be there, and then he gets a sense of something bad's going to happen. Um, and it does, and Alistair Smythe and his bug guys come to, um, you know, put a monkey wrench in, in their plans here and, um, basically send Jameson's son in, off into, off into nothing. Um, so it's really cool, him fighting against, you know, Alistair Smythe and this new, new scorpion is, is pretty awesome. Um, I know that there was a female scorpion um, during the, I think, the Gauntlet stuff. There was a female Scorpion. So I wonder what's going to happen with that character with uh, Matt Gargan back as the, as the real Scorpion. Um, yeah, just really neat. It ends off uh, them on the space shuttle. It's starting to launch, and um, um, Spider-Man and the Scorpion are, are on the rocket. So pretty cool overall, big time. Everybody's saying good things about it. So, yeah, good, good stuff. <clears throat> BP, BPRD, Hell on Earth, Gods, issue number one of three. I'm not going to say much about this one, because, um, you know, the BPRD, Hellboy stuff, I've, I've never said anything bad. The story arcs are always great. Um, this one, you never see um, anybody from the BPRD until the last page, which was neat. Um, and, and you still enjoyed the whole overall thing, so it was really cool. If you're not reading Hellboy or BPRD, get it. It's great stuff. Um, I am just, I, I don't know, I'm I'm so ready for Hellboy to be back, though. Each issue of BPRD that's coming out, I'm like, come on, come on, bring back Hellboy, bring back Hellboy. So, I don't know, the stories I'm kind of like skimming through <laughs> a little fast, maybe, because um, I want to get to to Hellboy coming back, but uh, it's, it's really good, it's really good stuff. <laughs> okay. Invincible Iron Man, issue number 500. Now, this one is kind of a self-contained um, story um, where something that Peter and Iron Man were working on um, when while Peter was employed with them, and I think that was during the Civil War-esque um, time there. Um, and this terrorist group now is trying to, uh, has stolen some of the ideas, the plans um, uh, that um, him and, him and uh, that Iron Man and Peter Parker were working on and <clears throat> they're trying to use that for their own for their own means um, and then it's also going into a future tale where that tech that they were designing uh, affects uh, a future of Tony Stark's and his kids <clears throat> and you know the world is a you know bad place and it's all this Stark tech that has been um, used by the Mandarin nonetheless and um, to make you know the Mandarin the, the, the ruler of all and so this tech comes into play um, it's kind of a neat story it's kind of a self-contained thing um, I'm not too excited about the I don't know, the future story, um, I think now that Marvel is piling on these future, um, stories and, um, time travels, I'm, I'm getting a little pulled back from it because it's getting to be too much for me now, um, in Avengers, I thought it was neat, you know, but then they started all this other stuff too, I mean, you got time travel with, um, you know, Astonishing Spider-Man and Peter Parker, you have this issue, Iron Man 500, a future tale. Uh, you had the Avengers going into the the future. Um, you know, and these are all the future stories are all you know in the Marvel would be alternate realities, and 
if you're piling all this stuff on me, I don't like it because it's it's all alternate realities. It's all what ifs. And I like what if stories to be self-contained, like in the what if tales. Um, so it's okay, but 500 as for me, eh, it's not all that good. Art, art is great. Um, Salvador's art is is beautiful. Um, can never argue with that. In this one, there are two two artists. There's a different art style for the future um, tale, and I don't I don't actually like that. Um, doesn't work on me for a 500th issue. Uh, yeah. So I am gonna pick up issue uh, 500.1. I think that'll be neat. Um, supposedly 501 and the point one system just will be a great jumping on point for people. Um, and just another view here, you guys. This is the Iron Man number 500 um, variant. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so anyways, you guys, that's that. Um, hopefully February 2nd, um, I'll be able to show you guys those books soon. Um, and I got some more stuff coming in the mail, some really great stuff. Um, and actually another Iron Man 500 variant, I think that will be really cool. So, yeah, anyways, that's that, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Lastly, guys, what I want to also tell you, you may have noticed in the beginning of the video that I got more issues of Spawn 200, six, six of the covers, um, and that would be because I want to announce a upcoming raffle for my 200 um, subscribers. I'm over 200 subscribers now, so eventually I'm going to do a, uh, a raffle, so just to let you guys know, that's coming.